bank with a new series starting next week called Forward. How many of you know that we're to put our eye, set our eyes on the author and finisher of our faith? We're not to look to the left or to the right, but we're to fix our eyes on him. And so next Sunday, we're going to kick it off with this theme called Forward and looking forward to that. We're going to end the series with our missions convention and missions banquet on January 21st and 22nd. So you'll see more information coming about that. All right. Well, this morning... I'm not going to, uh, like I said, the announcements are there for you in your bulletin. You also have a, uh, a calendar, but because of uh, time, and I want to be respectful of you and getting back to your families today, because I know you got a big roast or, or a ham waiting for you, right? Or brisket. If you have a brisket, raise your hand. I want to come to your house and bring my whole family. I, not family. We have a tribe with us this week. Tribe is tighter than family, right? So our family is here with us. Uh, We have family from Nebraska, family from Texas, and family from Rhode Island with us this week. Amen. Well, look, I'm uh, I'm honored this morning as a dad. There's no greater joy for me to uh, watch my sons walk in the calling that God has placed on their lives. 17 and 14 years old. And... My wife, and I get asked often by other pastors, uh, what, are you, what have you done? Your sons love God and they're passionate for the Lord. What have you done? What's been your secret? And here's my answer. We've just lived our life out loud for Jesus in front of them. And they, we've included them in our journey. We haven't put them off in a corner somewhere. We haven't did this or that and separated them. They've done it with us. And so they've seen good times. They've seen bad times. They've seen the hardships. They've seen the blessings. And for them to tell me, Dad, we want to devote our lives to the Lord. And we want to pursue ministry and go in, and follow the calling that God's placed on us. That's an amazing uh, a, a joy for me. And so it's a privilege and an honor I, I've, I've welcomed a lot of people to the pulpit that I had the responsibility of in churches I've pastored, but I'm, never, I'm not more excited than I am today. I want to invite my two sons to join me, because this morning we're going to preach together. They have a little more swag than I do. But beginning of December, we started a series, and we, it was this Star Wars. And some of you, a couple of you asked me, Pastor, how in the world are you going to get the Christmas message out of Star Wars? And I hope and pray that you've seen how we, we've done that. In the middle of that, we, did the, we pulled off this amazing outreach for the movie Rogue One that just happened uh, last week. And over 100 people got presented the gospel message and just shown the love of Christ that we know of. More than that, really. And just that outreach that we did that was happened last week was incredible. And it's just kind of went to all together. And God's been amazing. He's done great things this season here at LFA. So this morning, we're going to conclude our Star Wars series. Fitting that it's Christmas Day. And this morning, we, Jeremiah and Jonathan and I want to speak to you about this thought. May the force be with you. And amen. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. If you don't have a Bible, it'll be on the screen. Luke, chapter 2, and I'm going to read 20 verses. We read this this morning before we opened gifts, but <clears throat> it's a good... Good scripture verse for us to get into our spirits today. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all would, all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. 
And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is, is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from, the, from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Father, in, na in the name of Jesus, the name above all names, we are so blessed and honored to be in your presence. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are residing in this place this morning. Father, your word is, is very, very important to us as a church this morning. Father, we pray that your word would be deposited into our spirits. God, that this word would make sense. We would, help, we would be able to understand it. Father, I pray that you would help us to get it into our spirits and we would be able to put into practice the word that you give to us today. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The story of Christmas is one that comes with a powerful force. As you know, throughout the last several years, there's been a huge battle on Christmas. Should you say Merry Christmas, Holiday, Holy Day, all this, we get all this caught up in things. Should you say something that not offends someone? The Word of God's offensive. The Word of God is offensive. I don't have to say things to offend people. If I just live the Word and be the Word, then by my own lifestyle, my lifestyle will become offensive to some. We have this force going on in our world today, and there's this just trying to get push Christ out of everything that you see. No longer can you pray in schools. Uh, the ACLU is trying to threaten all kinds of things going on in America. It's just a force that this country has, is battling every single day. And sometimes, my friends, the church is even getting caught up in this. We're getting caught up in the force that's going on in the world. But as we said to, last week, we're not to be like the things of this world, but we're to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So this, there's a force that we're battling. There's a force in full operation. And today is Christmas Day. And we understand that this morning that it's not about the gifts, although I'm sure many of you opened your gifts already. It's not about those gifts. It's not about the Christmas decor. It's not about the Christmas bow ties and ties and all of that. It's not about even the time that you will gather around and eat your Christmas dinner. This morning we need to understand that Christmas is really all about Jesus Christ. Was he born on December 25th? Probably not. Was it cold? I don't know. I wasn't there. All I know is this is the time on our calendar that we separated, that we put aside, that said, you know what? Well, this is the time we're going to celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So as followers of Christ, if this is when we celebrate it, then we need to celebrate it. Amen? So would you join with me for a moment and let's just sing happy birthday to Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Amen. <clears throat> it's all about Jesus and Jesus alone. He is a force that's stronger than the force of this world. He's a force that's stronger than the enemy. He's a force to be reckoned with. He's a force that the world's been trying to push away for years. It's a mighty, mighty force. This force tells us that if God is for us, who can be against us, right? Because if his force is with me, then no force in hell is going to prosper against me. This force is for all of us. So today, this Christmas day, my sons and I want to tell you and talk to you about this amazing force. This force has a life-changing message. Amen. 
So I'm going to be talking about the, the message of peace. It, it was a soothing message. In verse 10, it says, uh, fear not. And that's pretty ironic because the teaching my dad did on angels a few weeks back, you're sitting in the field, a bunch of shepherds, and eight-foot angel appears with three faces and eyes all around his head. But he said, fear not. So I think that's pretty ironic, but so many people are afraid of God. You're supposed to fear God, but you're not supposed to be scared of him. He doesn't want to hurt you. He wants to be your friend. So we shouldn't have to fear when they say fear not, because perfect love casts out all fear, and Jesus removes all the fear that we should have. So I'm going to talk about some things that we don't have to fear. We shouldn't have to fear death, because the force is with us in the name of Jesus. Jesus has overcome the grave. Jesus has robbed the grave. So death, where is your sting? Death will not stop us from praising our king. Because when we get to heaven, we'll do it even more than we do now. What else shouldn't we be afraid of? We shouldn't be afraid of hell. We shouldn't fear hell because if you live a Christian lifestyle, then hell's nothing to worry about. And also, we shouldn't fear Satan. You see, Satan, Satan's just a little booby trap on the way to the kingdom of heaven. He, he's the Lego on the floor that when you're going to get your kid, you step on. And it hurts really bad. It doesn't take you completely down. See, Satan might win one battle against you, but he's not going to win the war. He, he might get you to downfall at some point in some sin, but you're going to get back up. You see, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Also going to talk about it was a saving message. Verse 10 through 11 says, good news, great joy. And I think that's a little weird because when I was little, when I was little, Christmas Day was the favorite day out of any day in the 365 days in a year. I loved Christmas Day. And I didn't really realize Christmas Day. I didn't, I celebrated it because I got stuff. But I thought it was so fun and awesome until you, you start growing up and I'm not all the way grown but I'm <laughs> I can realize what goes on and the fact is most people aren't very joyful around the holidays especially parents because parents think that they have to spend their whole year's wage on their children's presents you see parents it's more of a hustle than a joy for people around Christmas. And Christmas is supposed to be joyful. We're celebrating Jesus' birth. But we shouldn't have to make it a, a grief to go through Christmas. Oh, we got family coming. Oh, I don't want them here. See, <laughs> it's, it's always that one person, you know. But... But we need to make it joyful. See, Jesus, Jesus came into the world to make the world joyful, to have peace to all men, good news when he was born. And he has three titles in this message. Savior, he was the deliverer. Christ, the anointed one. And Lord, sovereign God. Also, this was a message with a viewpoint. This message pointed the way to Jesus Jesus is the word, and the word points the way. See, his word I have hid in my heart. So we have the waypoint to Jesus in us. All we have to do is open a book. So many different people look for things, look for a void that they need to fill, and they don't look for Jesus, or if they do look for Jesus, they don't look in the right spot. They don't look in the Bible when it's standing right in front of you, when it's in that desk, in that shelf, on the top shelf. They ignore it. But all we have to do is open the book because the 
message points the way. The message is a little tour guide that we have, the little safari man when you're out in the rainforest and he's teaching you where to go, where to go so you don't get hurt. See, this message points the way to Jesus. And also, lastly, it was a shouting message. See, the angels praise their creator. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. It's not a whisper. They praise their creator. See, they, so, so many of us want to keep quiet. So many of us want to tone it down a bit because we don't want to hurt somebody's ears. But some ears need to be heard. Some ears need to believe. Some ears need to hear the message. So shout it as loud as you can. And I want to ask this one question. Where is our praise today? Our praise might be in Christmas dinner. Or our praise might be, oh, I can't wait till the sermon gets over. Yeah, let's get through with the, all the spiritual stuff. And then I'm going to go straight home. Because I got a new thing this morning that I didn't get to test out yet because I had to go to church. You see, our praise today, if our praise was focused on God... Christmas would still be joyful. Praise to God and peace to man. And with that, come on. Number two, the message of praise. I don't know, it's something about getting in the presence of God that just makes me want to shout, makes me want to dance, makes me want to sing. Makes me want to worship, worship the King of Kings, Kings and the Lord of Lords. Lords. We, gotta we gotta get, get your, your praise, praise on. on. That's exactly. The, the angels appeared to the shepherds so that they could get their praise on. So that they, they could, could come, come to Jesus and then they could praise, praise the Holy, the Holiest Holy, 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 the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, the one who was gonna be, who was gonna lay down his life for all mankind, for you and for me. The shepherds were considered worthless. They were, they were considered, considered to be the lowest of the low. The low. They did they a job, job that no one else wanted, wanted to do. They, they smelled, they stunk, stunk but they, they did it anyways. Just, just showed that, that it just shows that, that everyone is able to worship God. God. Everyone, everyone can, can enter, enter into, into the throne room. room. Everyone, everyone can, can come into the Holy of Holies and, and worship the King of Kings because of what God's Son did. And he came and he died for you and for me. He came and he walked this earth and he talked with people and he healed the sick. And he, and he came, came and he, he spoke, spoke this good news, news that was of him. The word, word of truth. truth. He, he was, was the way. way. The, the shepherds, their jobs, jobs made them unclean. And the, and the fact, fact that, that they, they were, were unable, unable to come to the temple, temple for weeks. weeks. God, God came, came for the unclean. unclean. If we were to look, look at Luke, Luke 19, 19 verse 10. 10 for the, the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. And Mark 2 verse 17. And when, and when Jesus, Jesus heard it, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. I'm thankful that he called me. I'm thankful that whenever I didn't want anything to do with God, that whenever I didn't want anything to do with this thing, that I thought it was just, it was ridiculous, that I wanted more to do with the world, and I was interested in what the world had to offer, that he sent somebody with the word, with the good news, to speak into my life, so that, so that I could come, come to the great, great physician and be healed. healed. The men the who took care of the lamb, the, lamb, the lambs, were the, were the first, first to meet the, the lamb, lamb of God. God. This was a message, message of obedience. obedience. Simple men received a simple message. message. There's a two-letter two letter word. word. It's called go. Go. And go. go. I, I like I like acronyms. So I, I figured I should. Should try, try to come, come up, up with one for go. go. And all so I had, all I was thinking in my mind was game, game over, but that didn't make any sense. sense. I'm like, oh God, God, what, what is, is it? it? And so I had God, God over. over. He says, go, go into all the world. world. God's God been all, over, over all the world. world. He will he always, always be over, over all the world. world. He, he reigns over all the world. Where he tells you to go, he's already been. Where he tells you to go, his word has already been there. He sent, he sent out his, his word, word before, before you were going to even go there. there. He's, he's, just, just, he's just he's just looking for someone to be obedient. obedient. Someone, someone who's willing. Someone, someone who, who's, who's willing, willing to lay down their life like his son laid down, down for ours. 
And that's that's what what these shepherds shepherds did. did. They They came. came. They they, they proclaimed proclaimed a simple simple gospel. gospel. This was a message message of opportunity, and these shepherds knew it. It's It's the the good good news. news. It's It's the the good good news news of the coming of the Savior. They've they've known known about about this Messiah Messiah for a long long time. time. It was was prophesied prophesied by the prophets. But here they are. The angels appeared to them. And now they have this good news. Now they're coming to the king. They're coming to worship the king. And now they have this good news. Now they can be considered some of the world's first missionaries. First evangelists. Because they spread the good news. Now why on earth would we withhold anybody from hearing the good news of our Savior? From hearing the the love and the grace that that he has for us. And and, and the good news that his blood has washed us and made us whiter than snow. That he's purified us, sanctified us, justified us. Even when we were were unworthy, undeserving of any of it. He He came. came. He came. came. It's a great great opportunity. opportunity. Mark Mark 16, 15 15 is a command. command. It It says says go. go. Because Because that's that's what we ought to do. do. Anywhere you have have an opportunity. opportunity. Why why would you withhold somebody somebody from this this message? message. I am am so so glad glad someone someone didn't withhold it from me. me. I don't, I don't know, know where, where I would be if someone did withheld, withheld this message, message from me. me. I don't know what I would be doing. What I'd be thinking. What I, be thinking, what I, where, where I would be. be. Where, where our family, family would be if someone didn't withhold the message from them. Because, because our family, family, this is a legacy. legacy. It, started it started with my grandfather. grandfather. Someone, someone didn't, didn't withhold, withhold the message from him. So he didn't withhold the message from my dad. And he didn't withhold the message from me. You gotta, you gotta share, share the good, good news, news and we, we all fall short. I know I do. We, 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 we think we don't have, have enough time or we, or we get so, so busy, busy, especially, especially around, around this holiday, holiday season, this Christmas, Christmas season. season. Everyone's just shopping. shopping. The kids want this. Grandma wants, wants this. this. Uncle, Uncle, yeah, that, that looks good on him. him. And we're, we're not even, we're not even aware of the people around us. Who did you miss at Walmart the other day? Who looked, who looked in pain, in pain. Who, 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 who looked, looked like, 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 like something was wrong, who, who you, you felt, felt in your spirit. spirit. God I said, you need to need talk to, talk to them. them. You need you to pray, pray with them. them. Ask, Ask them if they need prayer. prayer. Why, Why don't, don't we do that? that? Why, Why don't, don't we do that? that? It's, it's in the Bible. Bible. Whenever a man shadow. What are we doing? It was an overwhelming overwhelming message. message. These men, they heard the message. message. They They saw the message. message. They came to Jesus and they worshipped him. Even though they might have felt unworthy because they were considered worthless. They came, but they they praised him anyways. But then they returned to the field. They They praised praised and they returned returned to the field. field. They returned returned to what what they were were doing doing beforehand. beforehand. See, there was was somebody, there's there's somebody somebody else in the Bible who who received the word, who received the message, who was anointed, anointed, that returned returned to what he was doing. Returned returned to to the the field. field. David, 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 Samuel came and he was looking for the king. He was like, one of these brothers is king. Where's the other one? Well, he's back in the field. Doing, doing what no one, one wanted to do. do. He was he a was shepherd, shepherd boy. boy. He was he taking, taking care of the sheep. sheep. He was he protecting was the sheep. sheep. He was he in the field, field all the time. time. But, but he, he came, came and said, bring him up to me. me. And he anointed, he anointed him king. king. He was, he was, the promise was he was, was going to be king. king. His, His posture, posture didn't change. The promise was different, but his posture didn't change. It's like, look, I don't need any of these presents for Christmas. I need the presence of God. David knew that that the same God that was with him in the field with the lion would be the same God that was going to be with him in the battle with Goliath. 
and the and same the God, God that was going to be, be with him in the future whenever he was crowned king. king. It was going to be the same God. God. So he returned, returned to the field. field. Why, Why are we so, so jealous, jealous of other people that get to do other things? When God says, you're in the field right now. To be a servant is one of the most important things you can do. If you can't serve, you can't lead. And that's where they're at. That's where the shepherds were at. Their circumstances had not changed, but their hearts did. Praise him. Any chance you get, no matter where you're at, no matter if you're in the field or if you're in the throne room, no matter if you're at church or you're at Walmart, no matter if you're at your job or you're at your house, when someone comes into your house, they should feel the presence of God. But far too often, that's not how it is in the American household or in any household in the world today. Far too often, there's yelling and screaming and, and arguing happening. And it's, it's like all hectic and violent and because we're arguing over stupid things. If it doesn't matter to the kingdom of God, why are we even bothering with it? We need to be focused on the king of kings. And we need to come in and worship him. You're never, You're never the same, same once you encounter the love of Christ. Christ. You're never, never the same. The same. These, These men, they encountered him and they couldn't shut, shut up about him. It. It, it was just, just a little, little baby, baby boy. He didn't even say anything yet. yet. But, they but they could, could feel, feel the power and the authority that this little baby, baby boy had. Their hearts were different. You know, they could have went and they said, this is nothing. He's in the manger. Why is he in the throne room? He's a king, isn't he? But they had a heart of passion and praise. So on this Christmas day, I'm asking you, how's your heart today? Number three. This Christmas message is a message of rejection. A message of rejection. It was a message of sadness. Here's Mary and Joseph. <clears throat> She's pregnant. They show up at the local Holiday Inn. Only to hear, we're sorry sir, we have no rooms available. No room in the inn. The innkeeper probably is one of the dumbest characters in the Bible. Could you imagine? He could have had this room called the King Suite. Baby Jesus was born here. He could have made a ton of money. What an idiot. No room in the inn. That's a sad message. Not only was that a sad message, but... Jesus gets told then that there's, there's no room for him there. 33 years later, he hears the cry of crucify. Many from those who were weeks, a week prior was shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. What a sad message, a message of rejection. I wonder how often this morning in our own lives... Do, are we rejecting the true message of Christ? How often are we saying, Lord, I want you to save me, but you can't have this part of my heart. There's no room over here. I like to flirt with this little sin in my life. I'll give you this part of my heart, but you can't have this part. There's, you can have this little room, this barn in the back, but you can't have the king suite. See, the mangers that we have today in our society are really not what would happen in that day. It, was a, it wasn't like a nice little barn. It was a cave. The house was on top and a cave underneath. So this baby, while the innkeeper was lying cozy in his bed, baby Jesus is lying in a feeding trough. Now, I don't know if you've ever been around a feeding trough, but when I moved in with my dad, we raised hogs. And one of my jobs was to slop the pigs every day. 
And I would get up early in the morning and I would have to go out and pour in the feed or pour in the slop. And those pigs would just come and make their oink oink noises like you're going to do later. (laughs) Slobber and spit everywhere. There's nothing pretty about a feeding trough. Aren't you thankful for that bed you were born in? It's not like what we see today in these our nice little plays. A message of sadness. Look at John 19, verse 15 with me, if you would. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. That was a sad message. Friends, do we understand that today... Our country is still not willing to receive the greatest king that this world's ever known. Now they're not willing. I shared shortly after we moved here in the book of Isaiah. It says, Isaiah is saying, uh, I saw the Lord and the train of his robe filled the temple. In those days. Kings, when they would conquer other kingdoms, they would take the robe of that king that they just defeated and sew that robe into their robe. And so the king with the longest robe was the baddest king around. And so when Isaiah says, I looked up and I saw the Lord and the train of his robe filled the temple, that tells me he has conquered all other kingdoms known to mankind. That he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. It's inscribed on his leg. He is the soon coming king. He's coming back again. Because there's no king like our king. All these other kings fall. They like Humpty Dumpty. They fall off. Have you ever wondered why when Humpty Dumpty fell, they didn't go and get the king himself to come and put him back together? Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Amen. All the Pastor Jack can't put you back together. Pastor so and so can't put you back together. TBN can't put you back together. Those psychic readers can't put you back together. Those little tarot cards can't put you back together. Louisiana lottery can't put you back together. But King Jesus can and will put you back together again. If we get to the place where we stop rejecting Him. Christmas, this story, this, this may the force be with you. Jesus was rejected and is still rejected today. Someone this morning, late last night, sent me a message. Pastor, someone I used to pass, Pastor, what do I do with someone who's an atheist and doesn't believe in Christmas and doesn't believe that Jesus is the reason for the season? I really, I sit there and I thought I would slap him for one. Why'd you slap me? Well, you don't believe in the force, and that force just smacked you upside the face. I really didn't hit you. I don't understand it. But I didn't. I didn't do that. I I, I, I I refrained. And I just answered them and said, you know, really and truthfully, all you can do is love them and show them the love of God. Because you are, St. Francis of Sissy said it best, preach the gospel at all times, and if need be, open up your mouth. Use words. Do you have room for him in your life today? Do you have room for him in your home? Do you care? Is he with you in your job? See, I, I've been in this thing called ministry since 1994 when I first met my, fam- my wife and her family. That's where we, I started. Since that time, it's an ongoing problem that I see all across America We say we're the church of the open door, but our doors are closed. And I'm not talking about the building. Amen? He's not coming back for this building. He's coming back for you and I because we are his bride. He's the groom. We are the church. So when we say we're church of the open door, are our hearts open to what God is trying to bring to us? Are we the people that are walking by the good? Are we the people walking by the homeless man or the prostitute or the stripper down the street? Or are we the good Samaritan? Lay aside whatever is in the way of letting him in and open the door. 
Not only was this a message of rejection and sadness, it's a message of sorrow. You see that when you have no Jesus, you have no hope. Right? No Jesus, no hope. But if you know Jesus, you will know hope. Amen? Without Jesus, there is no hope. Jonathan and Jeremiah, one of them asked me, or I told them what my motto was for my whole life, my, the ministry that we've been in together. This is my simple motto, and I, it may sound cliche to you, but it's what I live by. Offer, I want to offer hope to the hopeless and help to the helpless. That's just me. Because someone did the same to me. Snatched me, rescued me from the grips of hell. And I understand today more than ever before, and, it's an, and I still, there's still more to learn. But I love Christmas not because of a fat man in a red suit. Although if you read his story, it's a great story too. I want people to know that there is a Jesus and that only through him is there hope. Jesus and his church is the only hope for America. I've said, I said it during the elections, I'm going to say it till I die. Donald, hope, Donald Trump is not going to make America great again. Jesus Christ will make America great again. The White House... I, I pray for the White House. I pray for our political leaders just like I have ever since I've been old enough to vote and been a Christian. But God is more concerned about what's going on in your house and his house than he is the White House. Because if your house and God's house takes care of the business of the kingdom, then the White House wouldn't have so much to do. Without Jesus, there's no hope. And Jesus, we, we need the world to know that there is hope. Look at John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Except through me. Friends, this is also a message of separation. And we're coming to a close. See the innkeeper again, warm and secure in his cozy bed. Jesus was there lying in a dirty, filthy feeding trough. The innkeeper's rejection prevented him from knowing the joy that the shepherds had encountered. <clears throat> Imagine the joy that the shepherds endured, the, the joy that the shepherds got to receive. An angel appears, and they're, at first they're fearful, but 365 times in the Bible it says, Fear not, do not fear. That's cool, because that's, that's one for every day. Do not fear. The shepherds incur, incur, in, encountered that joy to the world. The Lord has come on that Christmas day. This innkeeper could have encountered that same joy, but he didn't. It was a separation. This separation may have also kept the innkeeper from knowing eternal life. Think about that. Scripture doesn't say that. It stops right there. But to someone who turns their nose, turns against God... Did he know he was turning against Jesus? No, just like on most days when we gather in the name of Christ, most people do not know that they're really rejecting Christ. See, when people, people have a problem sharing their faith with God because they are afraid of rejection, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting the message. I want to be his hands, I want to be his feet. I've got to be his mouthpiece. And I'm sorry. But we've sat back to way too long as people of God and Christians and let everybody else and every other organization known to mankind under this, under this, in this world that we live in stand up and proclaim their agenda. When are we going to come out of the closet, church? Amen. When will the church of Jesus Christ rise up once again and be the church that God has called us to be? Christmas Day is a great day to start that. God, I'm coming out of my closet. I'm not a secret Christian anymore. I've, I just finished a book by the Voice of the Martyrs. And man, that book just wrecked me. Their, their bold faith, their passion for God. In the midst, facing, facing death. Having the boldness to say, kill me and I'll just go see Jesus anyway. Kill me, but you won't kill the Spirit in me. Kill me, and His presence will fill your home. 
Wow. Hide it under a bushel? No. I'm going to let it shine. What about you and I this morning? This message is the force with you. Will you allow the force to be with you? See, Acts 1, 8. But you shall receive power. Power, force, right? You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Not so you can speak in tongues and do all that. See, even in Pentecostal circles, we get that out of whack, don't we? The Holy Ghost is not just so you can yabba dabba do. So that you, shall, you can receive power to be my witnesses. To proclaim my message that God has for us to proclaim. To set free the captives. That's why we need the power of the Holy Spirit. The innkeeper's rejection prevented him from knowing joy and possibly eternal life. Well, I, if there's any area in our life where we're rejecting the message of Jesus Christ, imagine for a moment what that's keeping you from experiencing. So this morning on this Christmas day, I'm going to ask the worship team if they'll come. And I'm going to ask my sons if they'll join me. I'll ask you for a moment, just close your eyes. You and Christ, you and Jesus right now. Don't look at your phones. Don't look at each other. Will you receive the message of Christ? Can we leave, can you and I leave here today with the assurance of heaven? This morning, if you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if you were to meet death before you left this service and you know that you would see Jesus face to face and enter heaven, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. Stand, you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I will see Jesus face to face. Your eyes are still closed. Begin to just thank the Lord for the salvation that He's given you. For those of you that can't stand, not sure where you're at, the greatest gift you could ever receive on Christmas Day is the gift of salvation. It's a free gift. It, it won't cost you nothing. See, someone else over 2,000 years ago didn't go to a store to find a gift. He didn't go to a store to have it gift wrapped. This gift that I'm talking about this morning was paid for in sweat and blood and tears. This gift was born in a manger not wrapped in pretty wrappings and bows. This gift was wrapped in swaddling clothes and swaddling clothes itch. This gift was presented to you. This gift walked this world as a man, experienced life just like you and I. No temptation that we faced did he not face. He faced it all. He overcame it. This perfect Lamb of God, this sinless, spotless Lamb of God, took on the weight of this world, took on the sin of you and I. The price on your head was so high, nobody else could pay for it. But Jesus said, I will. I'll pay for it with my life. And he died, took those stripes upon his back for every disease known to mankind. 39 stripes on his back. And his word tells us that by his stripes, not we will or we might be, but it says we are healed. That baby Jesus went to that cross as a man, died. Satan thought he was done. Satan thought he had won. Jesus went to hell, went to went into the grave, took a trip to hell, kicked Satan in the teeth, snatched the keys to death, hell, and the grave, and came out 
rose victoriously. All for you and I. All for those this morning that do not know if they would see Jesus face to face if they left here today and met their death. I was faced yesterday with knowing that this was the first Christmas without my earthly father here on earth. Just lost him a couple months ago. But I rejoice in the fact that my dad, all those, when I moved in with him at 15 years old, if he taught me anything and left me anything, was that he taught me what Jesus would do in your life. He taught me what the Holy Spirit would do in your life if you just submitted your life to him. So this morning, those of you that are sitting still, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer with me. Everyone else do it with us. We're family here this morning. Father in heaven, I thank you for loving me so much that you came to this world as a baby. Walked this earth as a man. Experienced all of my pain. Went to the cross. Took on my sin. Took those stripes on your back for my healing. You died and was buried. But you didn't stay there. You rose victoriously so that I could have eternal life. And this morning, on this Christmas day, I receive you, Jesus, as the best Christmas present ever. I invite you to be my Lord and my Savior. I commit my life to you. There's no greater thing I could do but to give you my life. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now everyone stand. You know what? If you prayed that prayer this morning and you really meant it, guess what? The Bible says that heaven is rejoicing. Heaven is having a party. Thank you, Jesus. Now, as they lead us in a, in a song, if any of you desire prayer this morning, some of you I know, you it's tough this time of the season. You've lost loved ones. I posted a video yesterday. I didn't know that it would go that far and that many views, but man. I know that this time of the year is tough for some of you. You lost someone in your life. You just want some. Hey, we want to pray for you if you allow us to. Or you're, some of you, anybody else, you want prayer for anything. My sons and I would love to lay hands on you and join with you and pray with you as they lead us in worship. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Show me your glory. Thank you, Lord. Show 